Welcome to Southbank Centre and our first Digital Unlimited. Please make yourself comfortable and grab any drinks or snacks you need as the event is about to begin. Firstly, a bit of housekeeping from us to make things run smoothly. If you require captions, please click on the closed caption box at the bottom of your screen to view these. Thanks to Claire Hill and Wendy Osmond for providing these for all live events throughout the festival. If you require British Sign Language interpretation, please pin the interpreter to your screen for live conversations. You can do this by hovering over their video and clicking the pin icon. You may need to multi-pin the interpreter and the speakers. Thanks to Performance Interpreting for coordinating this. If you use social media and want to share your festival experiences, please use at Southbank Centre, at We Are Unlimited, hashtag Unlimited Fest. We really hope you enjoy this event and the whole festival experience. It's always great to learn from our audiences what has worked well and what we could be doing better. Audience surveys will be sent out for feedback after the events, but do feel free to send personal feedback to unlimited at southbankcentre.co.uk. Thanks and enjoy the show. Hello, my name's Jo Berendt and I'm senior producer at Unlimited. Uh, first of all, sorry for some of the logins not working perfectly. Uh, it's a new thing for us, the online events, and we're working out how best to send those out. So we've uh, definitely learnt this morning, so the ones later on should be a lot uh, simpler. Uh, in terms of access, if anything isn't working for you, just tell us. We're not hiding access in any way at all. So do tell us if you're struggling to pin, we can pause and make sure you have that chance to repin an interpreter. Or if you're struggling to access the captions, again, just tell us. Um, in terms of uh, myself, I'm a 50 plus white woman uh, with shockingly uh, pink hair, uh, tending towards the plump. Uh, my Zoom may be interrupted by my cat, who gets very jealous of screen time. Uh, thanks so, so much for coming today. We wanted to provide a little bit of space uh, before the event started, before the festival proper started. Um, basically to tell you a little bit more about Unlimited itself, about the commissioning programme that sits behind the festival and provides some, but not all, of the work that you'll see over the next week. Uh, a reminder that we're recording this session and we will have this out uh, on our YouTube for people to catch up on. So if there's anything here that's useful to you, then um, uh, do spread the word and people will be able to catch up on it later. If you see me looking down, it's just because this is my, where my notes are. Uh, and if you see me doing any typing, it's because I'm still sending out the link to some people who can't get in. <laughs> so we're almost there. We're ready to go. Um, if you've got questions, ask them, because after the break, we'll do a bit of content first, then we'll have a break, and then after that break, it's all about answering the questions that you have. So, what is Unlimited? What is the Commission's programme? Well, obviously, we commission work by disabled artists, and we get the funding to do that from Arts Council England, Creative Scotland, Arts Council of Wales um, and also British Council. And we've been very uh, grateful to Paul Hamlin Foundation too, who come on board to support some of the artists who were most impacted by COVID-19 in terms of who had work that was ready to tour and then all those tours uh, canceled. So we fund artists across all art forms to create work and then to tour and share that work. That might be uh, a touring theatre piece like Jess Tom's Backstage in Biscuitland or a dance work like Claire Kim's The Way You Look At Me Tonight. It might be a visual artwork like Anna Berry's Breathing Room, which 
uh, was supposed to premiere at Milton Keynes uh, IF Festival last year, and will premiere there again <laughs> next year, uh, or this year rather, uh, just a bit later on than planned. It might be an exhibition like Susie Lark's um, Unseen, which is on the side of Southbank Centre at this very moment. If you're lucky enough to be in London and it's within your walking route or your exercise route, you'll be able to see it. If not, you'll be able to look on Southbank Centre's website and see the work there and watch a video about Susie. And when we say share that work, we also mean share the practice of the artists. So some of that work tours across the whole of the UK and internationally. Sometimes the artists tour to do panel discussions or residencies, those kind of things, and obviously increasingly online at the moment. And we link with the Southbank Centre every two years to showcase some of that work. Not all of it, but some of it. And we're really grateful to all of them for having put, uh, put this festival together whilst they've been on furlough and once they've been doing a range of uh, different things. Um, sorry, I'm just sending out some more links. Um, they've really gone above and beyond to be able to uh, do the festival in incredibly uh, reduced and trying circumstances. So we're amazed, uh, just so proud to be able to bring this to you today. Anyway, at the heart, we are a commissions program. So I'm going to stop there and invite Ellie to pop on and tell you a little bit more about what and how we commission. Hi, everyone. I'm just checking you can hear me. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, if you can't, please message in the chat because my internet occasionally goes on and off. Uh, hi, I'm Ellie, the current project manager for Unlimited, based uh, in a typical world uh, arts admin in London. My, my pronouns are she, her. I'm white, have brown hair, big glasses on, and today I'm wearing a brown shirt. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about our commissions process and how it runs. Uh, so as Joe said, every two years we run a commissions application round for disabled artists and disabled led companies typically culminating in the artist showcasing most of that work where it's appropriate at the South Bank Centre's Unlimited Festival. In September 2020, a few months ago, we opened up the portal for applicants to apply for this round of commissions. Artists could apply for three different strands, Emerging Artist Awards, R&D Awards and Main Commission Awards, ranging from applying for £10,000 up to £80,000. Applicants had two months to fill in an expression of interest application. We also put out a lot of the information in August, so they had time to read that before we opened the portal. A massive 468 people applied in total and 77 artists were shortlisted by three disabled led selection panels to apply to the next stage of full applications. Artists could apply for a strand award or also apply for partner awards with 11 incredible partner organizations partnering with us for this round. Partner awards are a little bit different from our standard awards. Each has its own additional criteria alongside unlimited existing criteria. Partner organizations for the main commissions this time round include Arts Admin, Pentabus, Welcome Collection, and Farnham Maltings. Our R&D award partners are Polka Theatre, South Bank Centre, the Bagbury Foundation, Sage Gateshead, and Museum of the Home. And for the Unlimited Emerging Artist Strand, we have partnered with The Art House in Coventry 2021. Shortlisted artists, have until the beginning of February to fill out the next stage of their applications. In this time, they will get up to an hour support from an unlimited staff member. And if they've been shortlisted for a partner award, they will also get support from the partner organization. Uh, Joe has just popped in the chat um, more information that you can read on our website, on a blog about the commissions and who was selected. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the day and session. I'm gonna pass back to Joe. Wonderful. That's great to hear about all those artists. 
and massive fingers crossed for uh, our 77 artists who are in that shortlist. I'm sorry if my internet goes uh, dodgy at varying points. I live in a rural location in West Yorkshire, so it's not always 100%. Uh, what's great is I can watch the interpreter, so I know if she can't hear me, then nobody can hear me. <laughs> OK, so Ellie mentioned uh, some of our allies, and some of our allies um, link to us in a whole variety of different ways, sometimes through co-funding an award. And we're really grateful for the ones who are, because it means we can spread our money uh, more widely. But our ally scheme isn't just open to people who fund us in that way. It's a much broader range of people. So I'm going to invite Abby up just to spend a few minutes telling you a little bit more about the ally scheme, which is open to any organisation who wants to join. So, Abby, come on down. Hi, thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, so I'm Abby, uh, working remotely in Norwich for Unlimited. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a white 50-something woman with shoulder-length brown hair, glasses, and I'm wearing a colourful scarf around my neck. And I'm also wearing a cat somewhere below the camera. Um, yeah, so the Allies are a network of approximately 500 supportive and relevant organisations or individuals, which range from venues, producers, galleries and other arts networks. And that's in England, Wales and Scotland. Uh, and we also have some international allies. In the past, allies have provided support in the way of mentoring, rehearsal space and programming. And as Joe mentioned, um, the current commissioning process uh, and as far as this goes, uh, if we think that there's someone, an ally who could help or support our artists, we try and put them in touch as presenting partners or whatever the artist or artist might need to support their project. Allies are also part of the wider ecology, growing and networking amongst each other to help increase visibility for disabled artists, as well as improve access and inclusion in the sector more widely. We couldn't do what we do without these important and valuable connections. And um, so we're really grateful for those. And I'll now pass back to Joe. So the cat was obviously sitting on my hand as I was trying to uh, click the button. Um, so thank you, Abby. That's great to know um, a bit more about the Allies programme and you can join uh, just by looking for the Allies page on our website and telling us a bit more about yourself and you can join in that way. So we said the commissioning disabled artists is the main thing that we do, which it is, but we also do more than that. And we have to, we have to because we can't just commission work by disabled artists and put it into a sector that is still systemically discriminatory towards disabled artists. We have to do our fair share of the work in trying to dismantle some of those barriers that are within the cultural sector as a whole. We have to provide uh, support where we can to help kind of challenge and change the way in which the system works, because otherwise we'll just, we'd be avoiding the problems, we'd be avoiding the reason why disabled artists are discriminated against in the first place. And we absolutely don't want to be doing that. So sometimes we do that through making connections for people. We hold connects events, which link allies and disabled artists. It has been in geographical regions or particular areas. We've done some in Wales, in Scotland, but also in Coventry, in Chelmsford, not just places that begin with C, a wide range of different places. Um, we developed a new tool to help people think differently about access. Cards for inclusion. Uh, if you haven't seen these, it's a card game that you can play to help you think differently um, about access. Uh, there's a link just gone in the uh, chat now about them. You can download them, they're free. Um, and it just helps you think about the different barriers that your work might be creating, witting or unwittingly and then you can work on dismantling them. It's also about trying to make it a bit fun rather than just endless lectures on access. Um, and we commission in a range of different ways. So we have full commissions where we take an idea 
and the artist creates the work and then shares that. We also do a lot of R&D commissioning. We think research and development is a really vital stage for artists um, and we really love supporting artists to take an idea and then work out how that might work in the real world. And at the end of every R&D stage, there's a chance to talk about that process and where people have got up to with an industry audience. That's another vital thing for our allies is being part of those audiences and getting to talk to disabled artists when their work is still in development so that people can learn best about how their work might fit certain audiences. Um, we've got a little video about uh, research and development that we've also just put in the chat. And we also support emerging artists. It's really important for us that we don't just support artists uh, uh, in the middle of their careers once they've already got a name for themselves, but also that we take on new artists who've yet to find their space within the cultural sector. Sometimes those who find it hardest to gain funding from conventional funding sources because they don't have that track record and they can't necessarily find their way through the barriers that are in place. Um, in that sector. If my camera's moving, the cat is now attacking the computer. Hey, we love cats. Cats and Zoom, we love it. Um, if you want to hear about some of that work in development or some of that work by emerging artists, then do come to the pitch and mix sessions that we're running. Um, they're one of our favourite things in the festival. We're delighted we've been able to uh, keep them in the online version. Um, we've got little videos from each of the artists about the work in development, and then there's a chance to talk to them live about questions and help them take their thinking that little stage further in relation to their work. What else do we do? As well as the call out that Ellie talked about, we also do some strategic co-commissioning. So we look through our programme and we think, where are the gaps? Where are the bits that we're not covering yet and then we see if there's a partner we could work with to fill that gap and look how we could best create something that might look at that particular area of work and bring disabled artists in there if they're not applying to deliver that work already and we've done that um, around live art we've done that around work uh, that's generated from an lbgtqia plus perspective uh, we've done that around work for children and young people, work for hospital settings, a range of different things where we've looked through the portfolio and gone, do you know what, there's a bit of a gap missing there. Um, one of the um, pieces that you might get to see today, there's, a, there's some surprises in the festival. Um, uh, little micro commissions, uh, Laura Jowers is the first one. And hers is a dance piece, and we were quite underrepresented in dance for a while, so we're delighted. That's the first of our little um, little micros. Uh, so do do have a look at that. And it also displays a bit of our intersectional approach. And Harry's going to pop on now and tell you a little bit more about that from Unlimited's perspective. Hi, I'm Harry. Uh, I'm program coordinator on Unlimited. Um, I am a white man in my late, mid to late twenties. Uh, I've got short, dark hair and I'm wearing a dark blue turtleneck. Um, so in the last year, I've been working quite a bit on capturing and analyzing data. Um, the main focus uh, for me has been on our equal opportunities form. Um, so we did a bit of an overhaul of this in the last year. Uh, and that began based on some conversations Joe had with Tarek Mutawakil, who's an artist we've commissioned in the past. Um, so what we've done is create a form that tries to capture intersectional data. Uh, so we ask a lot more questions than a typical form and it helps us get a picture of the different barriers our applicants face or don't face. Uh, so we use this data to identify gaps in our commissioning. Uh, and there's a link in the chat that should, yes, that's gone up now, um, to a blog where I put together um, the results of the data uh, regarding our commissions and what we're doing with it. So please do have a look at that when you get a chance. And I'll hand over back to Joe. 
Fantastic. So that's uh, commissioning covered. Allies covered. We're just swapping interpreters. So I'll pause a mo. Excellent. So we've done commissioning, we've done allies, we've done intersectionality. What next? I'm going to invite Isabella onto our screen. And um, after me, she's the longest serving team member on Unlimited. And uh, she's our key lead on anything festival related, but also anything international related. And she's going to tell you a little bit more about our international placements, our international producer placements, which are an important part of what we do as well. Over to Isabella. Thanks, Joe. Hopefully you can all um, hear me. My name is Isabella Tullock gallego um, I'm Programme Manager for Unlimited based at Shape Arts. Um, so my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a 30 year old white woman um, with long blonde hair and I'm wearing a dark grey jumper today. Um, so as Jo mentioned, I've been the key liaison for the programme with South Bank Centre and their Unlimited Festival for the past five years. Um, I also lead on the kind of international side of our work. So whether that's leading on elements such as our international unlimited symposium, which was back in 2018, um, or working with British Council on supporting our international producer placement program. Um, this program is a paid professional development opportunity um, for disabled arts administrators, programmers, or curators. Um, to essentially get involved with the delivery team at the Unlimited Programme um, and support disabled artists in the UK. So we're really proud to have so far supported seven placements from around the world. So from Australia, Uganda, Cambodia, Taiwan, South Africa, um, and now remotely from Israel and Germany. Um, so I'd like to invite Ido and Noah to pop on um, and just for them to sort of say hi and introduce themselves. Ido, Noah, do you want to pop on and say hi? Ido, if you go first. Hi, um, I'm Ido, uh, Ido Gringard. My pronouns are him, his, um, I'm a 44 year old white male with gray short hair and a ginger beard and mustache. Um, I'm wearing a red, white and blue uh, shirt and I'm in a wheelchair. Um, I'm from Tel Aviv. I'm a paraplegic from a motorcycle accident in India. Um, married and um, father to three. I'm an, interdiscipli uh, I'm an interdisciplinary artist, uh, producer and lecturer, combining space, body, um, disability and technology into immersive performances and installations. I have a BR from Tel Aviv University and an MA in performance from Central St. Martins. And um, my DBOT in disability arts was initiating a fashion show called I'm Disabled and Sexy, which had a big impact in Israel. Thanks, Ido. If no one wants to pop on and just introduce themselves. Yes, thank you, Isabella. Hi, my name is Noah Winter, pronouns they, them, and I'm a white, queer, disabled, chronically ill producer, consultant, and curator. And I'm currently based in Berlin, Germany. Um, I'm focusing on disability arts, accessibility, anti-ableism, and rest. Um, the main drive behind my work is to empower and support disabled and deaf people working in all jobs across the art sector. And my work is deeply invested in disability-led spaces and structural change to build anti-ableist futures in the arts and also beyond. 
Thanks to Noah and Ido. Um, and just a big thanks to them as well, especially as their placements have been impacted by the global pandemic. So are sort of doing that remotely at the moment. So we're really grateful for that. Um, our international work is key to enabling the work that we commission to reach a wider international audience. Um, and in doing so, start those bigger conversations about shifting perceptions of disabled people. So it's really important work and I'm really proud to be doing it. I'll hand you back to Jim. Back again. Um, as well as the international placements, we also want to make that shift closer to home. So ever since we started running Unlimited as a programme, we've had trainee opportunities. So 12 months paid traineeships to work with disabled uh, people at the start of their careers doesn't necessarily mean younger people. We've had older trainees as well, but people who want to find out more about working within the art sector, sometimes artists who want that background experience, sometimes people who want to work within the sector itself as um, facilitators, uh, producers, administrators. Um, and again, really, really important for us to build confidence, knowledge and skills within a range of disabled people so that they can go on and work within the industry, which is why they're 12 months only. It's awful to let them go at the end of 12 months when we've trained them up. We really want to keep them all, but we can't because the whole purpose is that they can go off and work within the industry. And that's absolutely happening. We've got people all over the industry. Anyway, we've just recruited our next two, if you like, and uh, they literally started last week. So I'm going to invite um, Marlo and April onto the screen. Uh, they literally started last week, so we'll find out what they've made of their first uh, literal week uh, in the job in a minute. Uh, so I've got Marlo up and April's coming up soon. Fantastic. Hello to both of you. Uh, let me just give you a moment to describe yourself. So Marlo, do you want to go first? Uh, hello, my name is Marlo. My pronouns are he, him. I am a black Indian transgender male in my early 20s and yeah and I'm wearing a black and red uh, striped shirt and I'm wearing glasses too so. Excellent and April. Uh, hi my name is April I'm a 20 something year old Swedish born Chinese non-binary person I'm wearing a black turtleneck I have short orange hair in the front of my head and a blue kind of waterfall of blue hair in the back and I'm wearing glasses as well. A waterfall of hair. I'm going to have to take on your descriptive term because <laughs> I want a better way to describe my hair. Okay, so I asked you to do a little bit of prep. Okay, three words that you would use to describe Unlimited having been with us for just one week. So Marlo first, your three words. My three words are exciting, progressive and necessary. Excellent. And April? And my three words are earnest, patient and thorough. Okay, I need to, I'm really curious about earnest. I'm going to definitely have to, uh, it, I've ne never been involved with anything that's been called earnest before. Really? So what do you mean by <laughs> earnest? Tell me a bit more about that. Uh, I just feel Unlimited is very committed to kind of building something in the long run and putting in those steps, step by step to do that. It's not really in a rush. It knows it's going to be here for a while to come. And I guess I associate that with earnesty. Yeah. Hey, good. I associate it with the importance of being earnest, which is the, the book. So all in my head, I get handbag. Anyway, <laughs> um, why do you want to work for Unlimited? Why did you apply? So Marlo, why, what was your motivation between wanting to apply? Well, I've always wanted to start to work in the arts and you know, Unlimited are commissioning work that is interesting to me both personally and interesting on a society-based level. And seeing those work and getting to work with those artists is like, so, so incredible and just so interesting. Also, I want to really want to get to support artists, you know, using my own skills and experience from being in the arts from a younger, younger age. So I would love to be able to, so I really want to support artists. So, and this is an organization that supports and nurtures and you help build talent. And also that Unlimited is an organization in itself that is progressive almost on what a, a workplace should be and what the kind of values they should have rather than what is the common narrative we have for workplaces 
And it's like quite entire, exciting to be able to work with people who are leading in this sector, but also, you know, just in, it's sort of in it, you don't almost think about it so much when you're in it and how you do it. And it's just incredible so far. Great. Well, sure, this will be um, change over the year. I'm sure we'll disappoint you at some point. <laughs> April, why did you want to work with us? Uh, I wanted to work for Unlimited to learn about how building an equal arts sector that welcomes opportunity for all on, on a genuine level uh, kind of looks like practically the kinds of tools and dynamics and initiatives that sustain this very long term but very important goal. And I also wanted to build on my own knowledge of the kind of support that disabled artists need based on my personal experience as an artist filmmaker. And I felt that Unlimited as a working environment really welcomed me developing this firsthand experience into a wider community building goal. So yeah. Excellent. And what are you most looking forward to? Because we're most looking forward to learning from you. Because for us, the traineeship is definitely, it's a two way thing. It's not us giving you skills and that's it. It's very much us learning as well about uh, new approaches, uh, areas that we are less sure about, and yeah, feelers into lots of different uh, new uh, new areas. But what are you looking most for, Marlo? Um, see, I'm looking forward most to, to meeting and making a great network of new artists. You know, I'm at the beginning of my career, I'm only 21, so you know, this opportunity to get to meet and make new kind of artist connections and to discover the work that's out there. And also I'm really looking forward to having a platform I can spring from to start like a massive, you know, I'm hoping massive, like a massive professional uh, career in the arts because I've really been wanting to do this for years and this is so exciting so far. <laughs> and lots of work to see this week. So yes, it's I'm so looking forward to looking at all the art artists and all the work this week. It's so exciting. You know. Yeah, it's a great timing that you actually get to see all of that. April, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, I'm most looking forward to kind of gaining a behind the scenes insight on how artistic projects are commissioned and supported from a disability centered perspective and also kind of broadening the many ways I've understood a disabl disabled led art piece to like feel or sound or look like, which I guess this week is also perfect. for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But again, I just want to make it really clear to anybody out there. It's like, you know, we're not, we are not in any way perfect we have really high expectations of ourselves and we don't always live up to those we don't always get things right um, but we really want to learn and we really want to share that learning with as many people as we can so uh, we often put a lot of blog content out about the things that we're learning so like the intersectional work that Harry was talking about earlier. Uh, both our trainees will be introducing themselves soon on our blog. Uh, so do sign up for our newsletter, which goes out uh, once a month and links you to any of the blogs that you might have missed uh, if you haven't been following closely on social media, which you shouldn't be following everything on social media. Go and have a walk. Go and get out in the fresh air. Do something else. Don't spend all your time on the computer. Um, brilliant. Thank you both very much for popping on. I hope you have a fantastic week uh, this week and get to see as much stuff uh, as, as you can fit in to your allotted time. OK, bye for now. So I said earlier that Unlimited was at the moment a programme and we're delivered through Shape Arts and Arts Admin. And that's the way we've been working since 2013. Uh, thanks to those brilliant delivery partners, we've literally had uh, a perfect base uh, from which to develop that program without having the downsides of being based in a building uh, or anything like that, which has really helped during the pandemic. We've just been able to focus on our work. But long-term, it's not incredibly sustainable. Long term, we know we need to become an organisation in our own right. And Arts Council England is supporting us on this journey. By March 2022, we'll be fully independent, but we're starting that process early in order to slowly move things across. And I'm going to be joined by the new chair for our board, uh, Anna Starkey, who I'm inviting on now. Let's just wait for them to pop in, brilliant. Um, it's this gentle transition that we're making over to being an organization. But I wonder, Anna, if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself and also about um, 
about that process and about the new organisation. Over to you. Thank you, Joe. Um, hi, everybody. It's it's super great to join you all here. So uh, my name's Anna. Um, my pronouns are she or they. Uh, I'm 42. I'm a white person. I've got messy, short, used to be blonde, sticky up hair. Um, and today I'm wearing a red jacket. Um, so I come from uh, a background across the arts and sciences, actually, working in all sorts of different cultural spaces. Um, and well, I guess if you're already familiar with Unlimited or if you've just been hearing about all of their amazing work for the first time, right through from the commissioning processes to producer placements and allies and so great to meet the, the, the latest uh, people, um, uh, Marlo and April um, too. Um, wherever you are in uh, understanding what Unlimited does, I'm sure you'll have a sense of why I'm so incredibly excited to be taking up this role of chair as Unlimited. Um, transforms into this new independent organisation. Um, so first of all, as a board, we're going to have the vital and the brilliant legacy of, of the last eight years of work um, and the people to inspire us as we work out how best to support Unlimited into the future. Um, and the second thing that's really exciting about it, this is that we've got a really rare opportunity here to build our own way of doing things. We're going to be holding a space for Unlimited to take flight as an organisation. Um, and so we don't have to inherit systems from an existing board or an, or an existing way of doing governance. So we can kind of develop and learn together as we go. Um, the board has got a responsibility, um, which is basically making sure that Unlimited does what it says it's going to do. And we've got this vision that's been set out for us to think about, and it's, it's this. Unlimited shall commission extraordinary work from disabled artists until the whole of the cultural sector does. This work will change and challenge the world. Well, that for me is a hell of a call to action and, and a really galvanizing vision to get us all literally on board. Um, and then we have to support Joe and the team in the values that are at the heart of Unlimited. And it's so great to hear the reflections of Marlo and April on, on those two um, that will allow this work to happen. And, and it's about finding working practices that are inspired by future possibilities rather than being shaped by past precedent. And that demands us as a board to work really differently too, which is great. Um, I won't get started now here on all the creaky and excluding societal structures that shape some of the rules and regulations for boards and governance, but I am so fizzing about the chance to rethink some of that stuff. Um, if we're going to change and challenge the world, we have to be an example of that in action. And that has to be in the way that the work is commissioned, the way artists are supported and included and championed and the way our board operates. So we're asking questions of everything from the charity constitutional documents to the structure of the new organization, how our values really and truly play out in HR and finance, what's useful that we can keep and inherit from what's gone before in the culture sector and what do we need to update and reimagine? What does a board meeting even look and feel like? So, we don't have all the answers yet. We've barely started. Um, but in case you're wondering, this is what we do know about the board right now. Uh, we are comprised of 92% disabled people. 31% um, of the board are people of colour. 46% um, define as LGBTQIA+. 62% are artists representing on the board. And 31% of us are people who are under 30. Um, and in, the board includes such amazing people. I'm so stoked to be having the chance to work with everyone. There's people interested in international work, equality for working class people within the arts sector, homelessness, rural culture, children and young people. Um, and I think popping up in the chat, you may find uh, a link to the blog, um, which introduces you to the board if you're interested to uh, find out more. We would love to hear from anyone who's got interesting examples of progressive governance, um, of really good ways of doing things. And we're also looking at the moment for anyone with financial and legal expertise to be on the board. So do get in touch with us. Um, I am so excited for all the ripples of change that Unlimited can create in the sector nationally, internationally, and I'm excited for the work itself for this week uh, and beyond that, seeing where deaf and disabled artists will go next as we find ways to continue to support and advocate and get closer to that amazing vision of a world in which disabled artists are fully integrated into culture. 
So there's tons to do. Um, I won't keep talking. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for being interested in Unlimited. I think it's time now, Joe, for a break. Am I right? And then, and then a bit of a chance for Q and A after that. Absolutely. Yes. So we've made it through the chatty bit. We're going to have a 10 minute break. Uh, during that, you'll hear some music from Katie Rose Bennett, who's an artist that we've supported this year. So you can just chillax and uh, listen to that. Hopefully become inspired enough to buy the new album uh, that she's produced and put out. Um, and then at 1130, we'll come back and we'll take questions. So do think over the break, what questions you have for us. And anybody that you've spoken to today can pop back on and uh, answer those questions uh, for you. So 10 minute break, chance to go get a cup of tea. I heard this morning that if you don't drink enough, if you, if you lessen your intake of water by 2%, it decreases your functionality by 12%. So I'm gonna go and have a glass of water and uh, see you at 11.30. Questions in the chat, please. Thanks. started pounding, pounding that rhythm of being numb. If I stare at that river, I swear it will pull me in. And is this just for one day? Or is this forever? I don't know if I can stay. Let's drive to the top with a city on one side, mountains to the right. Help me take a look at my life in the wide open sky. Wide open, wide open, wide open. When I woke up this morning, it was before the army of. And I knew the one day soon I'd be free again. And is this just for one day? Or is this forever? I don't know if I can stay. With no means of escape. And is this just for one day? Or is this forever? I don't know.
Jump out of the shadows and dance in the sun. If you don't try to walk, you'll never learn how to run. Take it slow, then go, then go with the sun and There was a girl. Social grace, sophistication, and wit. She'd sit alone in the schoolyard with sorrowful eyes, while the others all laughed, ignored her silent. And one day, walking home from school, she met a boy who said, "I'll tell you what to do. There's this man. He lives on the other side of town, and he'll take your shoes and he'll polish them black. He'll change the laces. He'll stretch the leather. He'll replace the soles, so you never ever have sad." Sad, sad shoes again. Jump out of the shadows and dance in the sun. If you don't try to walk, you'll never learn how to run. Take it slow, then go, then go with the sad shoes. Jump out of the shadows and dance in the sun. If you don't.
Welcome. Hi, welcome back. I uh, hope you had a good break, got some water, all of that. Um, we're literally going to take your questions now for as long as we have questions to answer. Can I ask Ellie and also Anna to pop their cameras and mics back on? So I'm not left all alone trying to answer questions. Also, because I think you've probably heard quite enough of my voice uh, today. So uh, Anna's with us and we'll just give a, a moment for Ellie to appear. Fantastic. So our first question uh, is from Oliver. And he said, um, what are the priorities going forward in terms of the gaps that still exist, that are still there for disabled artists? So I'm going to ask uh, Ellie, first of all, where do you think the gaps are at the moment in terms of the, the work that we commission? So the gaps are at the moment, but we're going to find out where the gaps are when it comes to the next commissioning round when we've uh, realized or when the panel have selected their final um, applicants but the gaps are to do at the moment with sort of regional areas um, so we're trying to uh, engage with regional areas that may have had less um, artists funded before so I think um, it's worth mentioning as well that Creative Scotland have come back on um, board with Unlimited this year so we're doing a lot more engagement in Scotland um, and the South East as well previously um, had less work than in other regional areas in England. Also, as Joe mentioned earlier, um, dance, we had some gaps in the fact that we didn't have as many applicants from dance in the past, as well as literature and uh, the written word and music as well. So we've worked on how to best reach um, artists from those areas and try to encourage them to apply for the round that I mentioned earlier, which uh, opened in September 2020 and is underway now. And the final thing um, was around um, specific demographic of artists we weren't reaching, which was learning disabled artists, visually impaired artists, as well as um, trans and non-binary artists. So again, we did some tailored sessions towards um, how to best reach those artists and try and encourage them to apply. But we'll only sort of know the gaps for the next year and how we can best partner with other organisations uh, once the panel have decided who has been um, selected. Jo, what have I missed? No, I think that, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, so April, we'll be looking at where our gaps are currently. But Anna, what generally do you think is kind of missing in the sector from your perspective? Well, I suppose my mind goes really long term. Ellis sums it up really brilliantly there, but also to to sort of the next bit out in the ecosystem, if you like, which is is understanding better the gaps in what's needed in the spaces in which that uh, these artists can perform, and I, and I think that's something that that I see and understand all the time. There's a huge amount of work to be done in, and 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 I think the big challenge is is working out where to start in a way, and, and what what the most pressing things are um, that that we can start to think about. So, yeah, I guess just just going out that step further in the big picture. Um, but really, I get I, I suppose as as the as our role as the board, we're here to sort of hear what you guys are saying and then help you think through how we can how we can start looking at all of that. I think the only thing I'd add to that is around disabled producers. Um, mm. We know of a few disabled producers, but we're always being asked, is there a disabled producer I can work with? And we do not have massive lists of disabled producers. We know again that production and being a producer, uh, being a curator, all of those uh, roles within the industry are absolutely vital. It's absolutely vital that disabled people get to do those rules too. It doesn't mean that every disabled artist wants to work with a disabled producer, but it means that we just need to have enough disabled people within that sector so that if a disabled artist does or a non-disabled artist does, then that's an option. That's a choice. There shouldn't be barriers to that. I know when I first started working as a producer, I was told... Um, that it would be impossible for me because I don't use the phone. Now I am old and the phone back then was a very dominant means of communication. But if you look at what's happening now with email, WhatsApp, uh, everything, 
that is there. I absolutely don't need to be able to communicate on the phone to do my job. I really, really don't. Um, and I think sometimes we hold those barriers, you know, we hold those blocks, we hold those assumptions in our heads um, unnecessarily. Oh, I think we've got another question uh, popped up. Uh, does unlimited work with the arts educational sector, both nationally and internationally, for example, arts colleges and universities to pr promote greater accessibility and diversity within the field of higher education? Uh, so I can say at the moment that no, we don't particularly. Ellie, can you think of any connections? I'm thinking about the recruiting trainees. We did push out there. Yeah, that was what I was going to say is we've, predominantly worked with universities and recruitment teams within universities for the trainee um, role but apart from that we don't really work with universities because at the moment it's also to do with capacity we're a very small team so can only do so much and students at universities will have support teams in place and um, so I think again Joe can lead on this and Anna can talk about potentially what the plans may be for the future, but at the moment it, it hasn't been a priority because there just hasn't been the capacity to do it. I suppose with all things with Unlimited, we'd love to do everything. We'd love to go into universities and really build on what Joe was saying, maybe go into production courses, try and have bursaries for disabled artists. We'd love to do everything, but as Joe famously always says, despite being called Unlimited, we are limited. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Anna, anything you think we can, uh, that's in your head for the future around linking in with education? Well, I mean, yeah, as, as Ellie's saying, it would be great to do everything, wouldn't it? But yeah, I, I'd love to find, you know, if there was a particular college who was doing that really well, perhaps um, with disabled students that, you know, I know of programmes where you sort of, you get a sort of an association with, with with an arts institution don't you and and and, and people can come through maybe into internships or whatever it might be um it's, it's a great question and i think it's a it's a really good thing for us to think about um and as ever yeah if, if anyone's got really good examples of, of places that are doing that really well we'd be really interested to hear about them and one of our board members uh, hannah also uh, just put a note in in the chat to me here going you published my dissertation though and that's true. Uh, Hannah, at the point we uh, appointed her uh, to the board, said, actually, I've got this dissertation. It's really timely um, because it's about that, about neurodiverse, uh, neurodivergent artists actually being able to have more opportunities now because of the pandemic than previously because of the different ways in which many organisations have been shifting and changing their practice. Um, and we thought, well, this is great. Let's commission um, Hannah to write a blog for us and she can put a link to that work there. So we are able to, to make that happen. But obviously we can't publish everybody's dissertation. I'm just setting some boundaries out there. Um, we tend to commission blog content that is linked directly to our artists or to our team, obviously now to our board uh, as well, where we can see a real relevance. Um, any other questions for us out there or have we got any questions for each other whilst we wait to see if any others come through? Anna, what do you want to ask Ellie? Ooh, good question. Well, I, I, actually, there was something that was just going through my head about the blog, seeing as you mentioned it, Joe, because I know that I know that many people in the culture sector, whether they're working with disabled artists or not, are finding the blog to be really transparent and honest about things that are difficult, things that we, we've learned. Um, and I just wondered how, how we choose what to write about or whether we ever get any input from people around things they'd like to see a blog post about. Um, maybe that's for you, Ellie, I don't know. It is for me, but ironically, the person in charge of blogs is also called Ellie, who's not here today from the comms <laughs> team who would give you a better overview of it. Um, but we often ask artists what they want to write about. Um, and it is very much led by the artist. So if you see a blog post, for instance, there was one this summer by Johnny Cotson, um, who wanted to write about uh, the impact of a programme that he did called Culture Reset and his whole rethinking. Um, some artists will want to just put videos on rather than text. I think that's something that will be really interesting to see where Unlimited goes in the future, because 
despite some artists choosing to put video content on there, it would be more interesting to see how the blog could reach more audiences and use different platforms. Um, so I'd be really interested to see where the blog goes and how it can best serve, for want of a better word, uh, the disabled artists um, that reach it. I had a question for you, Anna, if that's okay, oh, before I, I go to the oh. chat. Go on, thanks. We've got questions what? coming in a plenty. I know. And what what are you most looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to being surprised. I'm looking forward to encountering work and people with ideas and stuff that I, I sort of haven't even imagined yet. That's 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 what I'm yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Excellent. So we've got the Brexit question. Does Brexit impact either positively or negatively on the international work of Unlimited? Well, I'm just going to answer that and say, of course, negatively. Um, we've got artists who are used to traveling and performing extensively within Europe. We've been members of uh, IETM uh, and attending events and networking within Europe uh, over the last uh, eight years. And all of that will change hugely. Um, even artists who work further afield, often for sustainability, create tours that go through Europe on the way to other spaces and places. So all of that uh, is going to be impacted hugely. In terms of staff and freelancers and a range of people that we work with, the um, uncertainty, the constantly changing rules, all of that has a massive negative impact as well. And also we have to rethink data again. Obviously GDPR was created in line with European legislation. So we're all going to have to relearn all of those rules and that's costly as well. So there's a cost impact there. Anything else about Brexit, Anna or Ellie, that uh, is there for you? I think I'll just end up on a rant on the thing that I just read that the government apparently turned down the opportunity for um, touring uh, uh, musicians um, to have a sort of 90 day visa free period, which I fundamentally don't understand. So, um, yes, I mean, everything you said, Joe, we, we're just going to have to keep our eyes and ears open and, and understand um, all of the challenges that are, that are coming up um, and, and see what we can do about it. I think we're lucky that we have a lot of links with countries outside of Europe. So mm. those, those will continue and, and be maintained and be potentially less impacted. But I think it's also about how the UK is seen. I think uh, Brexit will, you know, could potentially damage the way in which the UK is seen. I don't know, uh, you know I'm trying not to be overtly political on it, but um, yeah, I worry how that go it alone mentality is gonna come over internationally. Um, there is uh, an anonymous attendee, an Irish disabled artist and curator, who wants to know when we put, when do we put calls out for the curator and the producer international placement program? So Ellie, can you just uh, talk through how that's usually recruited to, if you know, if not, I can take that. Isabella, as you know from earlier, leads on all things international, including the placements. So Joe, I'm passing it back to you. <laughs> Okay, so we usually have uh, placements around the festival time, which is usually around September. So if we have the funding to run more, and the funding's always come from the British Council, and obviously some things are shifting and changing within the British Council, partly due to Brexit, but also other funding uh, requirements. So we usually advertise them about a year in advance. Um, the next, hopefully, physical South Bank uh, Centre Unlimited Festival would be in September 2022. So hopefully in the autumn of this year, we'll be advertising those again, if we're able to run them. And again, it is obviously like everything funding dependent. Um, hopefully seven or eight years track record means that we will be able to run those again. And we usually advertise for two at a time. Um, yeah, and you've just met uh, Noah and Ida who are working with us remotely, sadly, uh, this time, because usually they would get the opportunity to come here. And there's other international placements connected through the festival as well. The International Discussion Panel has Sandy Yee, who was a placement with us 
um, speaking on it. So you'll be able to find out a little bit more about her practice uh, on that session if you're booked in for the Unlimited Discusses, the international one. Uh, okay, no other questions in the chat yet. Uh, let me just see if there's any in that one. No, uh, we've got quarter of an hour. Oh, international shows in the festival. Um, we're covering the festival programme because we don't curate the festival. That It's South Bank Centre's Unlimited Festival. Um, so we don't curate the festival specifically. That's down to South Bank Centre. And we'll be covering questions around that in the session that we're having after this one. So I'm not going to answer that now because I don't want to um, put people off attending that next one. But that's absolutely the place to ask that question about how other work gets programmed, because it's not all about our work. It is uh, slightly more open than that. But again, the answer is about looking for gaps, gaps in their program. Where have we not got work that they need work to make a full program? Other questions for us or for each other? Mm. The only other comment that I had on the Brexit question earlier was it's going to be really interesting to see how that impacts the sort of networks that we're involved with across Europe. So the one off the top of my head that I think about is IETM and how that will impact, you know, the wider reach of, again, the International Placement Programme, both are, you know, no at the moment is based in Germany and how that will change and definitely as Joe said um, we will reach other networks and other countries but it will also be very um, sad to think that we can't have the same engagement with European partners with European venues um, that we've had in the past so it will be interesting to see what happens what changes and like Anna said reading about the touring um, uh, news is just like heartbreaking um i'm currently employed by arts admin who do a lot of international work across europe as well uh, one of unlimited's current delivery partners and they're currently going through all of the notions and meetings about how that affects the artists they work with in terms of visas as well it's a whole open open field of unknown i would say i think what i i'm I'm trying to find some optimism in it. And I, and I think I, I, maybe I'm trying to find that around, um, I think there's all these challenges that you mentioned Ellie that we, we've got to work out, but in a way the conversations that I'm hearing are also about a sort of a realization of how precious and how brilliant those connections are across Europe and the world and a kind of a doubling down of intention to find new ways of making networks and, and making that that sort of work happens. So yeah, the, the optimist in me is, is hoping that we that, that just new new ways of doing that will grow somehow once we, once we've got through the kind of the drudge of working this phase out, I suppose. Uh, just a reminder, we can take questions in BSL. What you need to do is to raise your hand through the raise your hand button and then we can promote you to a panelist so that you can pop on and ask your question in BSL. And our interpreters will do the voiceover and then uh, we'll move you back to being an attendee afterwards. So that's absolutely uh, a possibility as well, obviously for deaf people or other people for whom typing uh, questions is, is less, less suitable. Um, I've got a question for Ellie, because Ellie, you've been with us only for a year. You started this time last year. So a bit similar to the trainees, what, what's been your best bit of the year in terms of how Unlimited operate and what's been uh, the most challenging? Because it'd be good for Anna to hear so uh, that they can help us look at the challenges in the way that we operate as we structure the new Unlimited. Interesting question. And I think a lot of people attending as well will feel potentially a similar feeling which is the biggest challenge has been COVID and the impact that's had not only on remote working but also um, we're a disabled led um, majority disabled led team uh, with Unlimited which means um, 
I am one of two staff members that are on the extremely vulnerable list, which just means the office environment, the everything you would get from being in an office. I moved to London for the role, um, the culture that that you would hope to experience being in a um, capital city. All of that was oof, wiped up um, from under my feet. The positive and the best bit has still been the people and it's still been the way that the artists we work with have persevered, have changed their projects, have bounced back and also have been honest to say, actually, you know what? I don't want to rework my project because it doesn't feel right to suddenly have this amazing immersive show online. And I think there's something about Unlimited which is honest and I think the artists that we work with are honest back and that's a really important thing that Unlimited have like Joe was saying earlier in terms of this is a great example of how we're being honest when it comes to trying to program and work with the South Bank to have an online festival and think about access and we may not get it right um, but we're humans and I think it's a really human focused um, organization with for want of a better word soul i think everyone that works for unlimited has a really good soul and they're in it for the right reasons um so that has been my positive has been the people the artists and the soul how's that joe that's amazing um and and very emotional too because we absolutely don't get stuff right all the time we really do try and say that the name unlimited and sometimes the brand seems really really huge um, you know, um, when you think of it, it is, you know, five to seven people sitting, not even all, all full time, uh, sitting at computers in their bedrooms uh, at the moment. And so that that disjunct, if you like, uh, can be really profound. OK, we don't have any other questions at the moment. Uh, so I'm thinking we go and get more tea. Uh, it's a long day. There's masses of stuff. Uh, to see at the festival. Stuff's open now. You can go and uh, look at lots and lots of work. Uh, I particularly recommend, uh, if you can't see Susie Lark's work live, absolutely go and look at the video um, about it. And even if you don't use audio description, I think it's really interesting to listen to the audio descriptions of the work because you get a different angle on on the work and I think it can be really really useful any other top tips for this week before we close uh, close the session no 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 just go to I, I can go to as much of it as you can and also you can do it from the comfort of your home which means you may be able to see more than you would in a typical festival so take it all in do the whole thing oh Isabella has said pace yourself take yeah, that's a counter. Take as much in as you can, but pace yourself. So maybe <laughs> take as much in as you can with breaks and a brew or an equivalent of a brew, whatever takes your fancy. Anna, what is what are you going to see that you're looking forward to? I, I've literally got a list of everything. Um, so I'm 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 sort of looking forward to watching it in bed, in the bath, um, in all the places that I wouldn't normally sort of uh, get to encounter stuff in so yeah i i'm not going to say an individual thing that i'm looking forward to because i haven't really seen any of it yet and um and and it's all exciting me equally so yeah i'm, I'm ready to get stuck in fantastic so we're going to take the pacing yourself seriously and we're going to stop a few minutes early um do pace yourself do look at the work if something is available at a particular time often it's then available for the next two days not always but often so that you do have a chance to watch it in the bath or wherever uh, suits you best can i just say thank you to everybody for coming on today and thank you uh, audience for bearing with any technical gremlins uh, that we've had um, we don't put on events like this all the time it's a learning process for us as much as everybody else um, and can i thank um South Bank Centre for uh, all of their amazing work putting on a festival during a pandemic. You, uh, and when so many staff are furloughed, uh, you astound us on a daily basis with the amount that, uh, that, 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 that you can do. And also, can we thank our funders? Because without you, we wouldn't have the funds to do what we do. And of course, finally, and most importantly, can we thank our artists? because without disabled artists, there would be no 
unlimited because we wouldn't have your exceptional work to showcase. But for now, that's it. Uh, if you're coming to the festival one, I'll see you in just over half an hour. But for now, bye. Thank you.